Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'ra habita fillah It's important to remember in this holy month And this is a reminder first and foremost to myself And then my brothers and sisters in Islam The importance of ikhlas lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala And that siyam, uh, fasting, is ibadah and so we have to have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is so much adilla, so much evidence from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that illustrate for us the importance of having sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that everything we do in Islam, that it requires our intention, that we should have this sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether that be... Uh, giving da'wah to people, giving da'wah, calling people. It should be calling people, what? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> and whether we are fasting, and that is fasting for who? And in accordance with what? It is fasting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And whether that is teaching, or whether that is receiving knowledge, that it should be done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's an act of ibadah. And as we've mentioned on countless times, we mentioned the statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, Rahmatullah Rahmatin Wasi'a, where he mentioned about uh, ibadah, ibadah. And he said, and he said, ibadah is a comprehensive term. Al-ism jami' li kulli ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardah min a'mal al-zahir wal-batin. Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that ibadah, it's a comprehensive term for everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from deeds that are uh, internal and external. So all of that makes up ibadah. And all of that requires ikhlas lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one thing I want to point, because people love controversy and they love controversial issues. And I want to point out the fact that every act of, uh, that relates to Islam, you need to have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means even if you're refuting Ahlul Bid'ah, it should be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to... Uh, raise yourself up, raise your group up, raise your click up, raise your hizb up to promote your website, to promote your uh, forum. That's not the, the reason. The, mak the maqsad is ibadah lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless us with ikhlas with the bad. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. And likewise, when you are commanding the good and forbidding the evil, amr bi ma'ruf and nahi an munkar. This requires ikhlas lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, for the people asking questions, this requires what? Sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you want to lift the ignorance from yourself, not to test the people, not to belittle the people, not, in cut, not to cut and paste the people, not in, uh, for any other maqsad, but rather it is to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, every act of ibadah, and so we'll begin by looking at what Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says fi kitab al-Kareem. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says fi kitab al-Kareem, "Qul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyayi wa mamati lillahi rabbil alamin." Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-Kareem. He says, "Say, verily my prayer and my sacrifice and my life and my death is for Allah." The Lord of the worlds. That's powerful when we reflect on this ayah. And instead of me giving you an explanation, I'm going to give you some of the tafsir that some of the ulama of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah from Qadimin ila Hadithin, what they said about these this beautiful ayah and the importance of sincerity. Imam al Qurtubi, rahimullah ta'ala, he mentioned, he said, Will ikhlas wajib. Imam Qurtubi, Rahmatullahi wa Rahmatin Wasi'a, he said, and ikhlas, sincerity, is an obligation in every act of qurb, 
Meaning qurbat, those things that are going to draw you nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning every act of worship. Wurriya, showing off, it uh, spoils it or it destroys it, meaning it destroys that act of ibadah. And that means shirk. That means either it could be the minor shirk or the major shirk. It could be uh, riya, as we mentioned, shirk al askar, or it could be shirk al akbar, the major shirk, which takes a person out of the fold of Islam. For example, the person who prays to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They pray to their idols, they pray to their elephants, they pray to uh, to the prophets. Alayhim afdal salatu wa salam. This is shirk al akbar, this is the major shirk. This nullifies ikhlas in its entirety and nullifies a person Islam if they don't make toba, if they, if they are a Muslim. And then there is shirk al-askar, which we mention, for example, one surah, one uh, uh, image, if you will, or one example of, of uh, shirk al-askar, this minor shirk, is the riyah. And Riyah, in fact, as the ulama mentioned, can also sometimes be major shirk. For example, the person who inserts the masjid for the reason strictly to show off to the people, then this, is, this can be major shirk. That's their whole reason. He went to the masjid to pray in front of the people, to beautify his prayer in front of the people. Not just beautify it, but totally khalis lahum. So this can is a form of riyah showing off, but this can maybe lead to the major shirk al-akbar. But riyah, on the other hand, a moment when the ulama mention riyah, they mention it as shirk al-asgar, the minor shirk. So, for example, the one who goes to the masjid and he, you know, the shaitan whispers to him, his eagle whispers to him, whatever the case may be. And he begins to show off. He begins to beautify his prayer. So that can nullify his prayer. It can nullify the act of ibadah in which it falls in. And that also depends on whether you catch that riyah or not. So there's a lot of tafsil with that. But we'll just leave it at that so that we have an idea. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said regarding uh, sincerity. He said, خلق الخلق لعبادته هذا هو مقصود المطلوب بجميع الحسنات وهو إخلاص الدين كله لله وما لم يحصل هذا المقصود فليس حسنة مطلقة مستو... مستوجبة لثواب الله في الآخرة He says, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله تعالى and this comes from his uh, جامع المسائل He says the creation was created to worship Allah, to worship Him. And this is what is intended and what is required in all good deeds, any, anything that is hasana. This is the requirement, is that it's, 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 it's ikhlas, that you are doing it for the sake of Allah and you're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And then he said, وَهُوَ إِخْلَاسِ الدِّينِ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ And it is making the religion purely worshipping solely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doing it strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, as long uh, as one does not uh, gain this muk this maqsid or what is maqsud is if one doesn't get doesn't do what is intended which is what what is the maqsid the maqsid is or what is maqsud here is ikhlas is sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if one doesn't earn that ikhlas meaning if one is not sincere then they have not got this this pure hasana you know it is not a deed that it will be fully rewarded meaning it there could be nuks because some riyah came in and it can be totally nullified if it was uh, the major shirk or uh, other than that. And he said, then they won't be deserving of that reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, said about this ayah and said about 
this ikhlas, the importance of sincerity, he said, Al-ibadat kullaha sawa. Kanat batanin kal-muhabba, muhabbatillah, wa ta'zim ma'azmahu, o ma kana zahira. Kal-qiyam bi shara'i al-zahira. Wa sawa ta'alakat bi hakukillah mahba. O ta'alaka bi hukuk al khalk. Kullu dhalika la bud fihi min al khlas lillahi wa mutabi' li rasuli lahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Sa'di, he said, Rahmatullah alayhi wa rahmatin wasi'ah. He said, All worship is the same. Regardless of whether it is internal, things like loving for the sake of Allah or loving Allah, muhabbatillah, muhabbatillah, you may see it manifested on the limbs, but aslan, it's something, ibadat qalbiya, it's something internal. No one can say, oh, let me take a microphone or let me take a measuring uh, instrument and measure how much muhabbatillah you have. No, they, they really can't do that. But you might have signs of it. Obviously, you'll have signs of it on your limbs and in, in your practice and the way, bi'idnillah ta'ala, in your appearance, that you are appearing in a beloved way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Tabarak wa ta'ala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so he said, wa ta'adheem ma azmahu, and, 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 and is exalting what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, exalts or, or, or says is great. That that is a part of this ibadah which is uh, uh, internal. And then he said, or it can be outward ibadah. For example, the uh, the actions, the apparent actions and signs of Islam. You know, for example, a person prays. This is outward. You, we, we see you doing ruku' and sujood and all the the actions of the prayer. And prayer also has va, uh, batin, you know, things that are internal as well, as far as the niya and as far as, uh, you know, your niya and, 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 and being a uh, tu'ma'nina and things like this, you know, the comfort in your, in your prayer. And so he says that they're all the same regardless of whether they have to do with the rights of Allah, with the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pure right of Allah, or whether they have to do with the right of his creation. For example, we have Islamic brotherhood rights over one another as a Muslim. Khalas, he's a Muslim. You, you must give him salams. This is the asl, is you have to give salams to your Muslim brother. You know, as the Prophet sallallahu said, haq muslim ala muslim khams. You know, there's five rights of the believer. Ittiba'a jana'is, you know, following the jana'is. Tashmeet al-a'atish. You know, uh, 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 you know when he says, uh, he sneezes. And he says, alhamdulillah. You say, yarhamakallah. So that, that's a part of the, the those those rights that we have over one another. And then he mentioned, first before that, he mentioned whether regardless of those, those rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ لِلْيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. That lets us know that's the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why Allah created us. That's our divine purpose we've been created for is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that from a nas, sarih, a, a, a clear, open text, which comes from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Mu'ad, tadri ma haqqal ali ibadi wa ma haqqal ibadi Allah. He said, O Mu'ad, do you know the right of Allah over his servants and the right of the servant over Allah? And then Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala and said, Allah wa rasuluhu alam. He said, Allah and his Messenger know best. He said, Haqqal Allah ali ibadi an ya'buduhu wa la yushirku bi shayin. And the right of Allah over his servant is that he, uh, that the servant worships him, him alone and doesn't associate partners with him. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right. And then he, so he mentioned that all of this, all of this illustrates 
that it's a necessity to have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he mentioned the other condition for our action, for our ibadah. What's the, the two conditions of ibadah? And I ask you, and I want you to know, to know this if you don't know it, learn this. This is important, especially for new Muslims and all of us. And share this. Share this, please. Share these two whenever you come across your Muslim brother and sister, especially those who don't have much knowledge. They're caught up in the dunya. They're, you know, sisters that... You know, involved in everything and all they care about is social media, but they're culturally a Muslim or whatever. Share this with them. Say, there's two conditions for our deeds to get accepted. You know, brother, there's two conditions to be, have our deeds accepted. Sister, may Allah bless you. There are two uh, conditions to have our deeds accepted. And they'll say, what are they? And you'll say, ikhlas lillah, sincerity to Allah, that you do it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and your worship is directed only to Allah, to barakah wa ta'ala. And the second thing is that it is in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi, mutaba, that you have to follow the sunnah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ikhlas, with thabat. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.